So why would I make a video like this? It's simple. It's for your awareness. You see the whole entire goal with this channel and the work that we do at reverseselling.com is to help you win at the highest level. And so my goal with this and sharing the six fastest ways to fail as a real estate agent is to help bring your awareness around these six things so that why? So that you don't do them, right? That's the goal. So let's jump into these. Number one, if you want to fail in real estate, set unrealistic goals. And here's what I mean. You see, I'm not the one to tell you what you can or you cannot do. Everyone can achieve anything they want in this business. That's the wrong question. The right question is, will you? In other words, this is what we got to think about. It isn't that your goal of 200,000 in your first year is unrealistic. It's, are you willing to do the work necessary that would put you in a position to earn the $200,000, the 400,000, the 800,000, whatever the goal is, when I say unrealistic, it isn't the goal. It's our actions and behaviors that often don't align with the goal that is unrealistic. We often find many, many real estate agents wanting this huge life, wanting great results, wanting huge incomes. There's no lack of ambition, but we rarely see agents that put forth the amount of work necessary to achieve those results. Number two, they don't have a business plan. You see, the agents that aren't where they want to be, when I ask them to review their business plan, when I ask them to review their client acquisition plan, they never have anything to show me. And so my goal in bringing this up is the agents that win at a big, big level they always have a plan. They don't just wing it. They know exactly what they need to be doing, when they need to be doing it, how often they need to be doing it in order to achieve the goals that they've set. And so think about that as you're watching this video. Do you have a plan? And if you have a plan, are you following the plan? And if you're following the plan, is that plan with you at all times that outlines exactly what I need to do? That if you execute on everything on your business plan, will those things help you achieve the goals that you've set. Number three, don't follow a schedule. Like many agents do, they don't follow a schedule. In fact, that's the reason why they got into the business in the first place, was so that they can do what they want when they feel like doing it. And what do we know? That's probably one of the fastest ways that we see real estate agents fail out of the business. In fact, it's the exact opposite is true, that we see agents that are succeeding, that make the most money, have the most disciplined schedule. Because what do we know about discipline? The more discipline we have, the more freedom we create. Think about it. If you're focused on getting everything done that you need to get done, following a schedule, then your free time increases. And those that have no schedule, find themselves working night and day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, around the clock, and they're always burnt out. So consider having a tight schedule. And then if you have that schedule, the question is, are you sticking to the schedule? Number four, don't stick with one strategy. Rather than putting your head down and focusing on one thing over the course of a long time, because that's how results happen, just try things for a couple of weeks. And if it doesn't work, try something else. You see, that is a recipe for failure. Oftentimes, real estate agents will hear about a real estate agent who is succeeding in strategy X, whatever it is. They will try said strategy, and if it doesn't work, if they don't get results, it's about 30 days for most real estate agents before they're off to the next thing. And then if that doesn't work in 30 days, they're off to the next thing, just charging their credit card. Let me try the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, until they $99 per month themselves right out of the business. Number five, don't hire a coach. Do not hire a coach if you're going to win in this business in a high level. Those that succeed all have coaches. Those that don't, don't. Because the people that don't succeed that have a scarcity mindset, they look at coaching or investing in themselves, buying a course, going to seminars, 
going to workshops, hiring a coach, they say to themselves, I can't afford that. And the people that win at the highest level say, I can't afford not to. Because the problem in our business, as all of you are well aware, you don't need me to tell you this, we're 1099 independent contractors. We have no accountability. No one's holding us accountable. There's no visibility around what we're doing. No one's checking in on us. And we know that left on our own, we're gonna take the path of least resistance. That's the truth. And for those that can accept that, like I have, I have three coaches because I know I will perform better when I know someone's checking in on my work. I will perform better when there is visibility around what it is that I do. I will perform better when there's a level of accountability around what it is that I do. I will perform better when I have someone who has walked the walk before me, blazing the path in front of me, and all I have to do is follow the path versus trying to figure out everything on my own because of some massive ego. And number six, hang out with low producers. If you want to fail in real estate, hang out with people that don't sell a lot of real estate and you will be the next one. You see, you've heard it a million times. Birds of a feather flock together. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's so true. It's so true that low producers in this business all hang out at the water cooler, all being negative, all the leads are bad, the broker's bad, I don't get enough this, I don't, they don't do enough that, the coffee stinks. Things, it, all they do is bitch and moan. And that negativity breeds negativity. And you see, the reality is that's why I think a lot of top producers aren't liked in most of their brokerages because they don't participate in any of the BS. It's rare that they go to any of the company uh, events. And this is why a lot of people didn't like me at my brokerages before I opened my own company. It's because I was too busy being successful to go to all these things that the low producers were looking to get a free dinner out of. I didn't want any part of that. I was too busy doing the work, surrounding myself with people who made me better. But I think a lot of low producers are like the crabs. When you try to leave the herd, the herd won't like it. And they'll try to pull you down. So we have to be careful with who we surround ourselves with.